Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and I'm so excited to talk to you about The Mandalorian, which is one of my top 10 favourite TV shows of all time. As you can see, I have this shirt that says Precious Cargo and has little baby Yoda in the pocket, so I'm ready to go. Ooh, <laughs> a lot to talk about here. So in case you don't know, The Mandalorian takes place in the universe of Star Wars and it's centred around this kind of bounty hunter called the Mandalorian. And basically he's tasked by this assassin guild to bring in a target which ends up being this little baby who is the species of Yoda, one of the master Jedi in the Star Wars series. But he ends up not subscribing to that plan and uh, the story goes on from there really. Speaking of subscribing, you should make sure that you're subscribed. Hit that red button down below and you won't miss out on any future pop culture goodness such as this. Um, it really means a lot. Anywho, one of my favourite things about it is that although it's a sci-fi, it is very much a western. The way that they bring up their guns, the way that the landscape is kind of like a barren desert, just like the fights and everything, it is such a western and I'm so on board with that. The mishmash reminds me of like rap and country coming into trend and I'm so on board with all of these combinations, okay? The show was created by John Furu? I don't really know how to pronounce that name. Uh, and it came out in 2019. It has two seasons out so far and I of course rated it a 5 out of 5 stars or a 95%. It features actors like Pedro Pascal who plays the Mandalorian and I will just say he is one of the best actors I've probably ever seen because the thing about the Mandalorian is that he can never take off his helmet in front of other people and so like 98% of the show is done with his helmet on but you can tell what he's feeling and what he's thinking even though you can't see his facial expressions. Which I think is such a big part of acting as well. So that is amazing. Go Pedro. The villain Moff Gideon is played by Giancarlo Esposito and we also have um, Rosario Dawson in here who plays Claire from Daredevil and Jessica Jones so amazing cast. I'm gonna be getting into the spoilers now. I will be talking about both seasons so before I start talking about season two I'll let you know just in case you've only seen season one so far okay I won't spoil you I promise. I'm gonna be talking about season one now so if you haven't seen it I really would recommend going to watch it it's so much fun it's so action-packed and it's so cute even if you don't like Star Wars or sci-fi people are flocking to it just because of the cuteness of baby Yoda and I'm okay with that. Go watch it, come back and we can discuss, okay? Okay. Goodbye people that haven't seen The Mandalorian season one. Go watch it and come back. Goodbye! <laughs> Okay, let's go. So at this point, the Mandalorian is working for um, a guild and he gets Beskar in payment. And Beskar is like this metal that the Mandalorians use and it's really strong. So I assume it's really expensive. So you're like the top if you have like armor made out of Beskar. And I really like the um, the blacksmith Mandalorian. I don't know if she has a name. If she does, I can't remember it, but I think she's really cool. Um, and the way she like hammers it and makes like pauldrons and stuff, I think is so cool. So the Mandalorian's been tasked with tracking uh, Baby Yoda and bringing it back. Oh, while he's doing that, he also runs into this bounty droid who's also after the child, I believe to eliminate the child. So he saves the child from the droid, which is really cool. And he kind of bonds with it because it's just a little baby Yoda and he doesn't want to turn it in for experimentation. He takes them out basically. Very cool fight sequence and ends up keeping baby Yoda and they run away together and it's really cool. So they end up going onto like a kind of deserted planet and he ends up having to bargain with the Jawas which are like the little alien things with hoods on uh, and they're kind of really annoying actually. Speaking of annoying that's the vacuum cleaner. Anywho and they basically want an egg in trade for fixing the Mandalorian ship which they basically destroyed because they um, took it for parts. So in order to get the egg he has to defeat this like rhino alien creature called the Mudhorn and it made me so sad because like rhinos are my fave and like to watch him like ruin it oh my goodness and the Mudhorn like almost kills the Mandalorian but um, baby Yoda ends up using the force 
to like stop it. So it can use the force, which is crazy. I mean, we know that it's obviously the same species as Yoda, like the master Jedi. We don't really know like even what the species is called. Like we're just calling it Yoda. <laughs> it's really cool that even though it's a baby, it can still like use this deadly force. And it's so cute. I'm just gonna chuck up some images here because we all need more baby Yoda in our lives. It's so freaking cute. I love Kuil, the little dude who lives on the desert planet. He's like, after everything he says, he's like, I have spoken. And it means like, <laughs> don't say anything else, it's irrelevant. So he rescues the child from the guild and they're trying to get away. But like the assassins or whatever are like closing in on them. We think they're done for because they keep getting shot at. But the other Mandalorians come and save him and the child. And that was so cool. Like just to see them flying in and like helping them escape. That was amazing. So we run into this ex-rebel shock trooper called Kara Dune. And I do just need to say that like I am aware that there is controversy surrounding Cara Dune and I don't know like all of it. I've just heard that the actress has some problematic standpoints and um, ideas and stuff. I don't know too much about that. I do think that she's been taken off of the show for season three because of that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. When I'm reviewing this I do just want to say that I'm gonna separate the actress from the character because I think like in some capacity I can do that. I don't know too much about the actress, I don't know really what's going on, and that kind of helps me to just look at the character itself. So all of my views on Cara Dune are about Cara Dune. Just want to say that going forward. So I think she's really cool as a character. Um, I really like that she was a shock trooper um, and she's very strong and strong-willed and basically he teams up with her to help this little fisher village that keeps getting attacked by these militant troops and taking their crops and stuff. They're getting terrorized so they need some help and uh, one of the villagers is uh, Leah from Twilight so that was really cool and I think they have a little thing going on like um, the Mandalorian and Leah because like he helps them out and stuff and the child bonds with all the other little kids in the village and it's really cute and she kind of helps out the Mandalorian and she she's like can't you take your helmet off like I want to see what's underneath and he's like no it's my creed they, the Mandalorians have this saying this is the way and like I think that is such a good motto like this is the way like there's no other alternative like this is what's going to happen very straightforward but yeah basically you can't take it off in front of other people otherwise you're kind of not really a Mandalorian so yeah he basically says nope puts it back on <laughs> The baby Yoda eats frogs. And I'm really trying not to be freaked out by that. Yeah. The baby Yoda is having such a good time in this Fisher village, like getting his meads net and stuff. And he's a little baby. The Mandalorian thinks, well, maybe it's best if he stays here with you guys so that he won't run into trouble with me anymore. But then Cara Dune kills this assassin that was about to shoot baby Yoda. We know that he's not going to be safe without the Mandalorian nearby. So they leave together. We meet Pili, who's a mechanic. She's really cool. And she has those droids um i forget what they're called like the little round ones that like run around a lot and um are generally used for mechanical stuff and he also runs into fennec who's an assassin and basically he teams up with this other dude uh, who's trying to get into the bounty hunters guild to kind of capture her and bring her in and basically toro the dude who's trying to be a bounty hunter shoots her but then mandalorian shoots him so it's all very confusing. We meet Mayfeld, who's this guy, he's a sharpshooter. There's a devil looking thing called Berg and Zian, who is uh, the sister of a prisoner that the Mandalorian has been hired by these people to free. They used to work together apparently, they're very sketchy peeps, but they all basically have to work together. That episode was really cool, the prison break one. Maybe my favorite in the first season. And Richard Ayoade is in it. He's like a English comedian and he voices the robot of like the evil crew. Uh, Q90, I think it's called. Yeah, and their mission is to rescue Sian's brother, Quinn, from prison. And of course, because they're criminals, they backstab him and try and take his ship and take baby Yoda. And it was so cool watching him hunt them all down. So the prison goes dark and he just goes through the hallways and takes them all out and it's so scary but it's so cool and so he takes baby Yoda and goes and like the people that hired them for this job also double cross him but he puts a tracker on them so like the the good guys come and 
you know, destroy them. So don't mess with the Mandalorian. So Kara and uh, Kuil team up and Kuil's reprogrammed the bounty hunter robot so it's good now and it like cares about baby Yoda and protects it. But Kuil ends up dying and oh my goodness, I was not ready for that. We learn that baby Yoda can force heal, which I think is so cool. Like how advanced must this Yoda species be? And it also makes me wonder like what happened to them? Are they all capable of using the force? Like what is going on with Yoda? Oh my god. That scene where there were those clone troopers and they were just talking and like making jokes and stuff. It was so funny. Oh my god. And so random. So they're trying to get away from Moff Gideon who's after the child. And at this point we believe that the reason Moff Gideon wanted the Mandalorian to get the child is because like they want to extract his Metachlorians or something or use him for experiments with the force and stuff like that. Uh, and in this process the Mandalorian Mandalorian gets really injured and he says to the rest go on ahead without me like I'm not gonna make it and he stays behind and the robot takes off his helmet so we see the Mandalorian for the first time and he's like what are you doing and the robot's like it's fine for you to show me because I'm not alive technically so you're not breaking your c creed so they escape with the help of the Mandalorian armorer that is so cool she's awesome and the bounty hunter robot self-destructs to help them get away. The Mandalorian kind of defeats Moff Gideon. That's kind of the end of the season. But then we see Moff Gideon take out the Dark Saber. So I don't know if you guys know <laughs> about the significance of the Dark Saber. It's a thing in the Clone Wars series. Um, I've only seen bits and pieces of that. But what I do know is that the evil blonde leader of like the Mandalorian rebel force or whatever had the dark saber and like it's supposed to be like whoever rules Mandalore has that I think so uh, it's really weird that he has it and it's really like such a piece of lore <laughs> Those were all my thoughts on season one of The Mandalorian. I would say I like both seasons equally. I really can't decide. But season two does add a little extra something something that we're going to talk about soon. If you haven't seen season two, please leave now. You've already seen season one. So like be invested. Go watch the second season. It's worth it. Come back and we can discuss. Okay. Okay. Goodbye people that haven't seen season two. Go watch it and come back. Goodbye. So, there's this dude called Cobb Vant, and he is wearing Mandalorian armor. So the Mandalorian rocks up into his town and he's like, Mandalorian? What? But no, he just um, bought the armor off of some Jawas that salvaged it. And this town is being, like, destroyed by this really big sand worm dragon thing. It's called a crate dragon. And they ask the Mandalorian for his help. And basically the Mandalorian's like, I'll help you if you give me back the Mandalorian armor. Because I guess he doesn't want his people being destroyed respected so I can respect that. So he helps defeat them and we learn that he can speak Tuscan which is the language of those like sand people um with the spiky heads. <laughs> we learn more about Boba Fett potentially if that's his armor. Then there's the episode where the Mandalorian is tasked by like this frog lady and and like her husband I guess to transport her and like their eggs to this safe place, this safe planet. Apparently she's rare or something, I'm not sure. But the <laughs> baby Yoda keeps eating the eggs and it's so disturbing. So basically the Mandalorian is wanted by the New Republic for the prison break that he did. And while they're on this really cold planet, they go into this cave and, and like there are these egg things everywhere. And immediately my mind thinks, alien and then the eggs sn like snatch open and there are like these spider things so I'm like okay like is this alien and then there's this huge giant spider thing coming after them and like the whole episode if you pay attention to it is like really creepy face hugger vibes so I think it's based off alien anyway so the new republic pilots come and save them because these spiders are overwhelming the ship and they're getting all gross and yeah they're safe and the eggs get transported whatever's left after baby Yoda meanwhile the man Mandalorian runs into into this lady called Bakatan, and there are these Mandalorians and there are these people in Mandalorian armor so I guess he's shocked to see people like him but they take their helmets off and we're like oh okay like they mustn't be real Mandalorians this season really likes tripping us out with who is a Mandalorian who is not and basically they're on this quest to reconquer Mandalore I guess they just really want revenge on whoever took it over at this point Dune has become a marshal which is cool um she's trying to help people and Karga is 
a magistrate. So they have to kind of destroy this imperial base that's remaining. And there's a tracker on the Razor Quest, so we're freaking out. Basically, this thing is messed up, this magistrate. Because um, they torture their citizens with electricity and just shoot them and stuff. And it's not a nice place to live. And we go into the forest because we hear that there's someone there that can help out Baby Yoda and find his people. Because that's become the Mandalorian's mission, is help get him back to where he belongs. Um, and the magistrate hires him and gives him Beskar because she wants someone in particular got ridden of and that is Ahsoka Tano. Again with the Clone Wars if you haven't seen it Ahsoka is a character in there she's a lot younger but she's so cool she was like my favorite character in the Clone Wars and it was just so nice seeing her like grown up and stuff even though she's obviously different and that's who Rosaria Dawson plays so that was like added coolness. Oh my goodness so much goss. Okay so Baby Yoda and Ahsoka talk to each other because they're mind linked or something through the force and we he learns so much. <laughs> we haven't heard any information about him this whole time, so just to learn these fragments is so nice. But his name is Grogu, so we have to stop calling him Baby Yoda, we have to stop calling him the child, he is Grogu. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> And apparently Grogu has already begun his Jedi training, which is crazy because he's a baby. And basically, the Mandalorian gets excited. He's like, you're a Jedi, he's a Jedi, could you train him? Like, you're his people. And Ahsoka's like, I can't. Like, he's formed an attachment to you that's strong, so I'm not going to get in the way of that. At first, I was like, Ahsoka, we need you. We need your help. Like, please help this fellow Jedi baby. But then I realised, like, what happened when she got too attached to her master. <laughs> in Clone Wars. So I'm not going down that road again. I, I understand. So basically he defeats the Magistrate and gets this Spear of Beskar which is really cool. He takes Grogu to this place to like meditate and find like other Jedi and it's like this like I don't know what it is like this force field beam stuff that comes out of Grogu. I guess like a signal and it's really strange and the Mandalorian can't get past it. These dark troopers come to take the child because he's vulnerable now and they're so scary. <laughs> the dark troopers are really scary. May or may not have had nightmares about them. Meanwhile, Boba freaking Fett shows up with Fennec. So she's not dead, first of all. And Boba Fett is like, got his armor on him. He's like kind of old and stuff. Like, Apparently Vance's armor belonged to Boba's dad, Django. So they help them escape. And also they go on this mission to break Mayfeld out of jail. That was really cool because there was this Rhydonium stuff which is really explosive. So like we can't really touch it. And in order to do so, like for the betterment of Baby Yoda, he removes his helmet. That was such a shock. Like he took off his helmet so everyone can see him for the baby. <laughs> like he broke his, his one creed, this is the way. So Mayfeld kills the cat captain of that base because like he committed a lot of atrocities against innocent people like burned them and killed them and stuff so Mayfell didn't want any of that. We learn that these new people are coming for Grogu and we now own the Darksaber so the Mandalorian defeats Moff Gideon sort of and takes it so we got the Darksaber we're gonna we're gonna take back Mandalore in the next season. Oh my god <laughs> when they are on the ship and there are all those dark troopers coming in and we know we're screwed and we see that lightsaber and we're like who is that coming through the door and it's Luke freaking Skywalk. <laughs> When I saw it was him, I was like, what? <laughs> My world stopped. Anyway, so when Grogu was like meditating and stuff, apparently he contacted Luke Skywalker and you know, he just walks in and yeah, says he'll train Grogu. So Grogu goes with Luke and R2 to go train. Boba Fett claims the throne and everything is just a lot. <laughs> Those are all my thoughts on the Mandalorian. I really hope there's another season. I'm not sure, but I really hope so. It seems like it's leaning that way. This is one of my favourite shows. I love it so much. It's so western and cute and I just love it. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Who's your favourite character? Do you think Pedro Pascal is as good an actor as I think he is? Do you like Grogu? <laughs> What do you think is going to happen in the next season? If you can give any like insightful views into Clone Wars lore that I might need to know, that would be really great. If you could have a lightsaber, what colour would it be? <laughs>
what was your favourite episode? Please let me know. I'd really love to discuss with you. I need to discuss with you. I'm Jade the Beamer. I upload every Monday with videos about TV shows, movies, books. I also delve into writing, poetry, board games and video games. So make sure you're subscribed down below and hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Here are my socials. I'm on Instagram, Twitter and Goodreads. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can reach out. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey. Take care and I'll catch you next time, you little grogus. Goodbye!